Hello everybody, my name is Lazaro Deschamps and I am the IT technician at the Homestead Zibrarium. Today we're going to be going over what virtual reality is, how to use our VR cube, and everything you need to know along those lines. So, what is VR? Different types of VR headset and equipment, VR and augmented reality, what is the virtual reality cube, and how can I use the VR cube? These are all things that we're going to be going over in more detail. So, going into what is virtual reality. Unlike traditional user interfaces, when you put on the headset, you are inside of the world. What that means is, instead of viewing a screen in front of you, like on your phone or on your TV, you'll be immersed and you'll be able to interact with a world that you're in. For example, you could be in space, you could be uh, throwing a baseball, um, and you'll be in this, I guess, a baseball field. Just imagine that you're in this world and not that you're watching it from a third person perspective, I guess. So, like I said, you're placed in this experience. You could be like this guy over here fighting aliens or flying a fighter jet in space. Looks like some technological world, uh, escaping prison. Um, there's so much that you can do. And I guess the limit is as much imagination as you have. Uh, you could go underwater. Like I said, fly a jet. Fight zombies. The sky is the limit. Um, so looking at this, we have our own Google Blocks, which is a 3D modeling experience you can kind of make things like this uh, maybe not so grandiose or large but there's so much you can do uh, looks like this is some large tankard or something um, there's a lot you can do with uh, the google blocks that we have at the virtual reality cube uh, just imagine you can build things in a three-dimensional space so we're going to be going over all of the many virtual reality equipment that you're going to I guess C, um, and then we'll at the end we'll go over what we have at the Cyberarium. Um, beginning with probably the most uh, well-known company that makes VR, we have the Oculus Rift. This is a wired headset, and it has to be connected to a computer. So the comp uh, the controllers that you get, 90% of the time, they're going to be wireless. Um, all of the apps, games, and experiences that you have on the Oculus will be on your computer. Um, this being an older model, model of the Oculus, I think it requires a strong computer, and it looks like the speakers are connected to the headset. Then we have the next Oculus model, which is the Go. This is the mobile one. It is a little cheaper than the next one that I'll go over, but this one is completely wireless and it doesn't require a computer. All of the apps and games are stored within the headset. Uh, you get a 32 gig option and a 64 gigabyte option. Um, that is the amount of space that you have on the headset and how much storage is possible. So you can only have at max 64 gigabytes worth of experiences on your headset at a time. And with this headset, you can actually use your glasses. I guess they upgraded from the previous model where you couldn't use your glasses because I guess they hadn't considered that originally. And then we have probably Oculus's best model, which is the Quest. Um, obviously, taking a look at those controllers, they are they are technically I, I actually think they look pretty cool and they and they're pretty handy to use as well. I've used one before. Um, this one comes with a 64 gig and 256 gigabyte option. Uh, that's a lot. You can have a, a lot of virtual reality games on this headset. Um, and by that, that means you obviously can't store any of those games on your computer because it's all done locally on the headset. Um, this one is also compatible with, with glasses, but from experience... Uh, you need to have small glasses, you can't have big glasses. And then we have Sony's PSVR, uh, meaning Sony's PlayStation Virtual Reality. 
Um, you can only use this headset on a PlayStation 4 or a PlayStation 5 console. That means it doesn't run by itself and you can't run it on a computer. It only works with PlayStation. The games and experiences are stored on the PlayStation 4 or 5 console and there are no speakers on this. And like previously said, uh, using my experience, I know that this does not work with glasses. Uh, it pushes them in and there's not enough room. Next, we have the Samsung Gear. The Samsung Gear is not the same as the rest of the headsets that I've gone over. Um, the Samsung Gear only allows you to slide in your phone. So looking at the front, there is a little latch on it and you can unclip it and then there's enough room that you have to take off the cover from your phone and you can slide it in. Slide it in. Um, most of the time you won't be playing games, you'll be playing videos using Samsung Gear. Uh, YouTube has an option where you can watch 360 videos and that's where you'll be. Next, we're gonna go over the HTC Vive. Um, we have the more, I guess, the newer version of the HTC Vive. Um, this one is wired. It has to be connected to a computer. Um, the controls are wireless and the apps and games are stored within the computer and not the headset itself. This one does not come with speakers, but it is compatible with glasses. Um, sometimes you'll be able to play different experiences or games on HTC Vive versus the Oculus headset. So if you're interested in getting either one, I would do a little bit of research because some of them are only made for specific headsets. So now we have the Pro Eye Tracking HTC Vive. This is their top of the line headset. Um, all the games and experiences are stored on your computer. Um, it is can be completely wireless actually. Um, so there's a wireless option and then there's a wired option. And there's some cool technology working in like the works with the Eye Pro Tracking. Uh, so the focus only, I guess I'm trying to explain it. The focus only happens where you're looking currently. So there's like little cameras that are focusing on your eyes and wherever you're looking, um, the headset will have a focus there. That way you get very crisp quality uh, video on the, the headsets. And then if you take a look in the back, there's two little blocks, two little black squares. Um, those are sensors and they, you put them up per, like on your roof or like high up on the wall pointing down towards you and they can track your body movement so that you get a more immersive experience while playing your games. Um, the technology is pretty cool in this headset. I think I would argue that this is probably the best in the, in the market. So now I'm going to go over the differences between augmented and virtual reality. Um, I'm sure someone may have heard of virtual reality before. If you've watched Iron Man, Iron Man uses a lot of augmented reality. Not a real version of it, but that's kind of the concept. Uh, you're bringing out something into the real world that isn't there, as opposed to you being immersed in a world. So, using Pokemon Go as an option... Um, instead of being brought into the world, the world is brought to you. So obviously this cute little Pokemon isn't real. It's not there, but looking through the camera, you can kind of see the Pokemon. I mean, you can see the Pokemon actually. Um, and you can toss your Pokeball and you can catch it. Um, so this Pokemon obviously isn't real, but it's real to the camera it exists in the camera if you move and you turn around and look away and then look back at that same spot that pokemon will still be in the exact same spot so quickly going over the differences um, augmented reality adds digital elements to a live view like the pokemon example um, versus virtual reality that you are completely immersed it, it shuts out all physical all of the physical world. None of what is outside matters when you're wearing the headset because all you're seeing and hearing is what's in the headset. Uh, you have to view everything through the headset, like I said, but in AR, it has to be viewed through something like 
uh, glasses or a camera. Their most popular, the most popular version of AR, I would argue, is Snapchat with their cute little puppy ears and uh, all their all the different versions of whatever Snapchat can do with their filters. Um, that's about it for comparisons. That that is. Um, so there's a lot of practical uses for AR. Um, for example, on the right hand side, you can see they someone is like looking to furnish their house and they're putting uh, the table or chair that you're looking at online. You're placing it in your room and seeing how it would look. Um, this is pretty useful because I guess you can kind of get a, a good imagination as to what you're putting in your home. So next we have. Uh, the personal use version, which is, like I said, you put whatever you want, or uh, private use. You can kind of like, I guess, for example, have an alien spaceship in the sky while you're looking through your glasses, or while you're walking through the street, uh, you can put mustaches on everybody. You know, uh, silly little things like that, but there's obviously more better practical uses. And then we have like a public version. Um, I guess the best example would be Pokemon Go. And then we have, I guess the best way to explain it is here are some different examples like bringing your art to life or looking up different body parts uh, while pointing towards this uh, this sculpture, I guess. Or if there's an application that you can download on your phone and you point it towards products and then it'll show you if there's any discounts on that product. You just point it to, I don't know, a, a glass of milk or something, or a cup of milk, a gallon of milk, I mean, and then it's uh, it'll point you to a link with a coupon for that exact gallon of milk or a bottle of ketchup, you know, whatever. Whatever is at the store. And then uh, using this as an example, um, it can point towards uh, using AR. It can tell you what is standing out in an image, uh, what this what this product is, where you can get it. Uh, there's a lot of interesting and cool practical uses for augmented reality. Um, there's one more type of reality that we want to get into, um, less common than the other two, but it's worth talking about. We have mixed reality. Mixed reality is somewhere down the middle of both AR and VR. So it adds real world and digital objects so that they can interact. Um, a good example of mixed reality would be Microsoft Paint Arena. I'll add a link to that in the comment section of our Facebook post and you can take a look. Um, it, it kind of extends what both VR and AR can do. So taking a look over here, mixed reality, Virtual environment combined with real world. Uh, so if you see a chair and you can walk around it with a camera, I guess, and then you can place it in virtual reality and then you can look at a 3D model of said chair. That's a good example of mixed reality. You can do both real world and virtual. So here we have the inside of the VR cube. Um, what we're looking at right now is three of our four stations within the VR cube. One of them we have uh, currently turned off because of COVID regulations, but hopefully eventually soon we'll be able to turn that back on and we can have another station inside. Now out here we have six more stations. Um, these are more public and I recommend that we put anyone out here uh, if they're new to VR, because I'll be right around the corner just to help you, or someone else will be. Um, as you can see, every station has a headset and a chair, because all of our stations have to be seated. Now let's go over some of our VR experiences that we have at the Cyberium. Just before I get into it, uh, all of this is subject to change, uh, depending on how well you guys enjoy everything. Um, we may add or remove experiences, and I'm only showing you some of them just to kind of 
tease a little bit so that maybe you'll be interested and maybe you want to come take a look yourself. Um, so looking at this, we have Air Car. This is a very fun experience. It's a little difficult for new for people who are new, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty fun. I will mention, though, this one does make me a little dizzy, but it's pretty fun. Uh, you're flying through what looks like a futuristic city in a flying car. Um, you can go up, down. You can fly between buildings. It is very cool. Um, this is a very good example of what virtual reality can be. What I would argue is our most popular experience, Spider-Man. The kids seem to love this one. Um, I mean, I like it too. I can't, there's no way I can lie. I, I love Spider-Man and this experience was very, very fun. Uh, you swing through the city, you can fight giant robots, you can swing through checkpoints. There's so much you can do. Um, the Night Cafe, Van Gogh. This one is a short but sweet experience. Um, you're, you start in a small little cafe, and it's all in uh, this beautiful art style. And you can see Vincent Van Gogh walking around, look out a window, sit down. It's very short, but I think uh, this one is worth just pausing for five minutes and taking a look because it is beautiful. Trials on Tatooine. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but this one is very fun if you're a Star Wars fan. Um, it's short as well, but this is an, this one is definitely worth taking a look at. YouTube VR. Like I had mentioned earlier in the video, uh, we uh, YouTube has a 360 video option, and I would argue it's pretty fun. A lot of the kids seem to like it. Uh, I would definitely take a look at this one if you're interested in uh, what a 360 video looks like. Google Earth VR. Um, if you've used Google Maps, you know what Google Earth is, uh, except this time you are placed wherever you want to go. You can go visit Paris. You can go to Egypt. Uh, you can go to Rome. There's so much you can possibly do. I think that this one is this one's a hit. I like I like just sitting down for a little while and flying through the cities. It's it's beautiful. The VR Funhouse. Um, that I don't also don't want to spoil anything for this one, but there's so much you can do. There's a lot of little mini little, little mini games that you can do in this one. It is very fun. The Google Spotlight Stories. We have our short little movies. They're all. Uh, 360 video movies, uh, very popular amongst the kids as well. Uh, I like, uh, we have one called um, Age of Sail. That is my favorite one. It's a little sad story, but I really like it. Waltz of the Wizard, which is the Cybrarium favorite, at least amongst the employees. We really, really like this one. You can, you play as a wizard. You can make different types of potions that give you different powers a lot of magical items to play with, like swords or uh, a xylophone that if you hit certain notes, you get teleported to another world. And then once you're bored with that, you can go into a labyrinth and fight uh, zombies or something or some looks like uh, there's some sort of armored zombies, it looks like. And it's pretty fun. Rec Room, which is very popular amongst kids. It's similar to Roblox. Uh, you can dress up your character however you like. You can play different mini games with your friends, talk to them. It, there's so much you can do. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for sticking around to the end, and I hope you learned something new, at least regarding VR, AR, or even the VR headsets. Um, I'll stick around after a while, for a while after we upload this video to answer any questions regarding VR, the cube, or even setting up an appointment. Um, soon I will be doing, uploading another video in regards to how to set up an appointment at VR and how to, what paperwork you need to have done. And please don't forget to visit the Cyberium website, cyberium.org. Thank you and have a great day.